Hello, welcome to another episode of What Are You Selling with me, David Green. And today I am joined by the one, the only, the C, Mary Holtman. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. I'm doing well. Now, the name, the name might appear at the bottom of the screen here because we're doing Zoom, but I was going to say, what does the C stand for in the, in the C, Mary? But we, we know it's Christopher. Yes. Yeah. My name is way too long, Christopher Mary Hulkman, but I just like that doesn't work. I need to shorten it and just like, well, yeah. Of all my of my three names, I think the the Christopher is the one I kind of like the least. Right. You can um, just come with Mary Hulkman. Yeah. Like, what is this? What is this, Mary Hulkman? Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it like? Is it? Do you want me to marry Hulkman or? Yeah. Is it, is it like an order? Are people being told to marry Mary Holtman? Or what like, if I would have done that? Yeah, Mary Holtman and then just an exclamation point at the end. Have done, yeah. That yeah. Was my author name. <laughs> Mary, comma, Holtman, exclamation mark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of, so I, I'm not, uh, not kind of, I, I very often wish that I'd gone with some kind of uh, pen name because my name is just so generic and boring that it's like, well, <laughs> David Green, that's it. Um, and I can see there, like on, on your screen there, you've got a, a quote from me about the book we're going to talk about. Yes. D Green, which is, uh, could be anyone really, like, you know. <laughs> uh, Derek Green. Derek Green. Uh, but um, yeah, there's nothing really, because like my middle name is Peter. So I couldn't really put like DP Green because that's pretty, that's pretty suggestive. And yeah. Um, uh, well, but you start writing romance novels. That could be. Your... Yeah, that's that's could be that could be it. But it's also one of those things as well. It's like because um, obviously I do the fantasy stuff, and then I've got like a crime thriller coming out and what have you. And I was like, should I do that under a, a, a new name? It's like, well, what's the point? Because like, you know, you want you want people to. And I know like some like you know like Robin Hobb, uh, Megan Linholm had had her real name yeah. Megan Linholm, and she wrote the fantasy stuff under Robin Hobb. Um, but like she's big enough that she people will go with either name now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like with me, it's like, well, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like Dean Coons. I think I read somewhere that Dean Coons has like 67 different pen names. Yeah. One of them is David Green. That's right. I think it is actually DP Green. DP one of Green yeah. DP. Did you ever check to see if there was anybody else writing under David Green? Oh yeah, there is. There's a there's a there's a few people. Um like on, on Goodreads, uh, my to, to assign a book to me, it's David with 18 spaces and then green because there's so many David Greens. And they all do, uh, they all do, um, like educational books about really weird stuff, like all of them, every single yeah. one of the ones, like they're all different people, and they all do stuff like, uh, like 50 facts about armadillos that you need to know when it's like all this kind of stuff it's like what, what's going on with these people um so yeah there there is that but anyway we're not here to talk about me we're here to talk about you yeah, so, and uh you have uh you, you actually have two new books coming out this month uh out, out already but we're yeah. here to talk about one in particular which is all the children shall need yeah it is yes my uh tech I think I'm trying to do, figure out what kind of story it is, what, what genre it is, um, because I mean it is science fiction because it's set in space. But I wanted, I found tech noir to be the best because yeah. it's because it's a, like a noir story. I, for some reason, I can't. I always fancied myself a sci, uh, fantasy writer when I was younger. That's what I wanted to do. But I, more often than not, I end up. With, writing thrillers crime fiction crime noir just like yourself yeah well yeah sometimes <laughs> yeah well sometimes yeah well we all write different things but it seems like it's a genre that i keep coming back to the noir yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well noir is fun to play with so i'll read the blurb that's on the back of this so all the children shall lead is coming from black ink fiction and we'll talk a little bit about that later on because <laughs> Obviously, this had a bit of a, a the, the story itself has a little bit of a story behind it. Absolutely. Um, so, so this is from Black Ink Fiction, and uh, it's out on January thirty first on Kindle. But you can actually get the paperback right now, uh, which you can check out on on Amazon <laughs> and other good places. 
So uh, all the children shall eat is the blurb. In the distant future, the human race has made their homes in dome cities on Mars, Venus, and Luna after leaving a dying Earth. Various nations control their own spaceports, keeping a fragile balance as they struggle for control of trade routes and the secret of terraforming. Former military man and current drunk Alessandro Hoffman is approached by an old friend with an opportunity at redemption. Solve the case of a missing school class who vanished on a routine field trip passing terror. But the investigation is poised to reveal a darker truth. The fleeing nations left people on the ruined earth to fend for themselves. Now earth survivors are eager to exact revenge on those who left them for dead and anyone else who gets in their way. Very interesting. more exciting than I remember it to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a, there's a little quote there from someone called D. Green that says, Hopeman crafts a story that twists and turns its way to a startling conclusion. Would you say that is correct? Yes, I would say so. Even though it has a little bit of a cliffhanger, I think that's something that caveat that needs to be put in. It has a cliffhanger ending. Well, everything has a cliffhanger these days. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but there's definitely a revelation at the end. Uh, maybe the blurb gives away a little bit away too much of it, but there's a lot of different things that happen. But yeah, no, it it, it um, when I started writing it, I didn't really expect it to to twist and turn as much as as, as it did. Um, there's a lot more of the story that needs to be told. Right. But what, where did you get the idea for this for, from? Uh, well, the story came about back in the day when people basically just made homepages to be to make homepages you know the age of myspace and stuff like that although i didn't use myspace for it <laughs> i wanted to i wanted to flex my uh my writing muscles and kind of like just get better at at writing uh and i decided i would try to to write a serial story kind of like in the in the style of i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say i'm any uh any kind of charles dickens or Jules Verne but uh, in that way where you kind of just like do it episodically or you just kind of write like a story maybe like a month or whatever or a chapter a month and then just try to tie it in so when it first started um I wanted I wanted it to be like a classic you know noir drunk as we were talking about like a philip marlowe or sam spade character set in in space so it actually started with the main character alessandro hoffman uh in the in the first scene where he's in like a, a spaceport in, in a bar in a seedy bar um kind of not really reflecting at where he was in life but more like just being <clears throat> at rock bottom and then getting an opportunity and that's kind of how it built because i needed to figure out well what would that opportunity be in, in this world um and i figured obviously it would be classic solving solving a crime but it needed to be hush hush it needed to be secretive so then i just needed to craft like well why is it secretive uh what does this world look like so after i had started the first first chapter when that was done then i started crafting like the world as it was and i took a lot of inspiration from an old role-playing game uh, a swedish role-playing game called mutant chronicles which was also a horrible horrible movie um i don't know if you saw it was it just sweet is it just in sweden is it no it's in it's it's uh it was produced in america mutant chronicles yeah. it's with um oh, what's his name he was he was in Duke, he was in deep blue sea and he was in Punisher. Jackson. <laughs> no, that's not Jackson. No, is his name Jade? Jane? Tom Jane? Thomas Jane? Oh, Thomas Jane and Ron, Ron Perlman was in it as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Ron really Perlman is in everything. Uh, and, John, uh, and I don't. I mean, I don't want mean to say that it's horrible because I know the guy who who uh, produced it, uh, Frederick Malmberg, who also owns all the rights to the Conan books. Oh yeah, uh, you want to be on using it too. Yeah, uh, you just you want to be on his Mount Crystal, whatever. Here you want to be on his good side. John Malkovich. No, not John Malkovich. The the producer Frederick, <laughs> who owns the. Who, but I mean, so in that series uh, or in that role playing game, uh, people humans had traveled, uh, were living uh, in space, uh, and there there's more of like a a fantasy paranormal element to it because they open like a portal where like Lovecraftian creatures come out. Right. Okay. 
and then they have to but I, I was intrigued by this like what would happen if man had to exit the world in an exodus in a mass exodus because we had destroyed the world too much uh and what would happen and i was kind of a, when i built the world <clears throat> what kind of happened was that i realized that well would like america go up in space and build a new america would sweden go up and build a new sweden no because sweden doesn't have enough money to funds to do that so what what would happen well nations that that kind of uh, felt a kinship with each other um would probably band together so like the nordic countries they used to work together they would form one nation which they do in my in the story they form the the kalmaric union which used to be like an old medieval union between sweden denmark yes. uh and um and norway uh to to pool their funds together so that they can they can travel up uh, to space and i was thinking in the america would maybe maybe try to do that but i wanted to add a nationalistic um kind of element to it so instead of americans all the like like rich italians in america would band together with other italians or europeans to form so they form kind of like a a full roman empire and stuff like that so like all of the people from the different um because americans will always say well my family is irish and we're irish and that, that would be such a strong element the drive that they go back to that so yeah. that's kind of like what what happened and i got really intrigued in this world that i started making and i focused a lot on the nation that is called the commonwealth which is like england or the great britain and all their former colonies in one like big nation uh, and uh, yeah, and using the Commonwealth was kind of an interesting part. They, I try to use a lot of British history, but the, the the funny thing is that they use it incorrectly because they don't really know so much about history in this world because everything's kind of been destroyed during the Exodus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they kind of make up. So there's a lot of reference to like the new model army and roundheads and cavaliers, but they don't really know. No, they yeah. just take all these names. Yeah, that's kind of like... Um well a lot of stuff that happens in the fallout games where it's like it's it's the 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 um the cultures are based on kind of a half memory of something that yeah full facts about which is which is always kind of fun to play with the thing that i was um surprised with 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 this book was that um it, sweden goes into space and there's no ikeas in space no i know i think in, in the sequel um, there will definitely be Ikeas. There will be a whole Ikea nation, I'm sure. I think so. There should be. Because, I mean, that's where, like, Sweden gets most of the money from. So, you know, they mm. want to exploit that kind of money, don't they? Well, yeah, Ikea building, yeah, uh, half-assed furniture and also selling uh, weapons to Saudi Arabia. That's where Sweden gets their, exactly. their money from. And Finland get it from, well, they used to get it from Nokia and, uh, yeah, no. and, 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 and saunas. So yeah, vodka. I think you need to finish vodka. The sequel. So this, this, uh, so all the children shall lead had quite a an interesting um, backstory uh, yeah. about getting to to print. So you were talking before about how um, you wanted to kind of do that the, the old kind of serialized pulp kind of release, like yeah, well, you do like Dickens and, and Jules Verne and H.P. Lovecraft and, and, and oh yeah. And that was actually going to be the case at one point. It was going to be released yes. monthly in a publication, wasn't it? Yeah, actually, yeah. The idea was that it was supposed to be released already last year in January. The book actually was supposed to be, and then there was even like uh, you know promo material and stuff like that created. Uh, and the idea was then afterwards it was supposed to be serialized, and I think one uh, chapter actually came out uh, in a monthly pub publication. Um, from a different publisher and it never never really came to fruition because as many indie publishers do they kind of went belly up or oh i don't know why we, we don't have we don't to even know <laughs> we don't, we don't even, even know. know we don't have to get into that too much but safe suffice to say that it, it just disappeared yes without a, a word and i know i mean you had some dealings with them as well mm -hmm. Kind of. uh, th thankfully, uh, thankfully, I hadn't started work on on the thing, <laughs> no. do, so it was like, well, you know, I just I just forget about that idea. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the story, I mean, because when I when I started working, and I think it was about halfway done when I got 
the contract to serialize it um, from the beginning, and then I finished writing it. Um, and there was like the the discussion was well, we needed to be about so and so many words per chapter, so that I had and I had like a limit of like this is how long uh, it needed needs to be. And uh, so that it, so in that sense, the story is a little bit limited. Because there are, I mean, certain things that I could have like elaborated on in the various chapters, uh, but it also gave me a deadline to finish it. Um, and and so I think if if when you read it, you'll you'll probably if you're familiar with the pulpy style of writing or the pulpy way of of ending a chapter or the contents of a chapter, then then you'll you'll I mean you'll recognize it in this book and also like the cliffhanger ending at the end, if, because I want you guys to to check out book number two, which already has a tentative title of Red Sky. But so that was kind of um, that's a lot did not the long and short of it, because uh, so it was it was hanging in limbo, I think, for about five or six months before uh, Black Ink Fiction uh, agreed to take it on. And, and Shelley and, and Brandy have actually done a really good job because I was a little bit seeing as how our the publisher stopped being active after the first magazine came out and the first chapter came out. Um, the idea was that we were supposed to work on it together and, you know, editing and, and you know, adding and, and subtracting stuff. So I was a little bit tentative when I gave it to, to Black Ink Fiction thinking like, I don't know if this is, you know, as good as it could be. Uh, or if the public, the previous publisher was just blowing smoke up my ass and wanted to get something out. Yeah. But they were, they were, they've actually done a great work, uh, leaving comments and editing and, and stuff like that. Um, and so this is obviously, it ends with a cliffhanger. Um, we won't go into spoilers as to what that is. So what do you, where do you see the rest of the series going? And like, you know, is it going to be, is there an end point or is it just kind of, you're going to keep writing it as you've got ideas for it yeah well i've got an i've got an idea for the second book i don't know so much i think ideas for this because i i would like to to expand it into like maybe a third and fourth book possibly uh obviously i don't see myself as a james essay Corey uh with the expanse although i would like to go that route but uh, there's i think there's a lot more in the world because there are nations that we still haven't really explored and, and seen there's like a, a united african coalition um that i would like to get into a little bit more uh but the second book red sky will mostly likely take place most of it will will most likely take place uh on uh on the dying earth at least halfway through, you know, to begin with, um, see it from a different uh, different perspective. I did write a, a short story, a prequel to to the book about the actual Exodus, uh, which hopefully I can I can put out sometime. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, at least a second book, and I hope hopefully a third book if I get uh, get an idea, because there probably won't be a real res resolution to all the problems in this in this world uh to the problem that is at hand most likely there will be a resolution uh, but there won't be a problem because there's everything will be i mean it's it's the, the entire world is on a like balancing on a knife edge where stuff could like hit shit could like hit the fan whenever uh problem is that they try not to because obviously they haven't terraformed anything so they live in domes basically you don't want to end up like Cohagen in total recall with your eyes popping out as soon as you break the domes yeah well, so well, yeah unless you want that to happen to them <laughs> unless that's your goal but yeah yeah and also there's a whole the, there's a whole issue of because um in my in in this world people are segregated into what they call puros and rudos and the puros are people who are you know completely irish or completely english or whatever and then you have people who are mixed um so there's a big uh, you know class distinction where people who are mixed don't get to hold certain uh office position you know positions uh, in the world or stuff like that yeah echoing 
realities of our world uh, past. Yeah, and, 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 and when I started, I mean, the, the story has been in, in the works, I think, for like four, maybe five years, if not even longer. Um, so it's kind of followed the, 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 the development of the times, I think, very much. Yeah. And uh, before we finish up as well, you, you, as I said before, you actually have an, had another book out uh, just a few, two weeks ago. So busy yeah. January, you stacking it all up. Um, These Walls Will Fall, which is a, mm -hmm. a short uh, novelette, um, which you also posed for the front cover of as well. You would think so. <laughs> you and I probably, most yeah. likely. Yeah. I would think that you look, you're you in the background where I was in the foreground, yeah. Um, I'm not don't want to talk ill of the publisher uh i would not have chosen that my my wife said that doesn't look did you create that cover i said no <laughs> you threw a better cover probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a um, cover, I, think, but it's just, I always kind of think that um you know when they use like real life um model real life people for yeah. covers, you recognize them too much i'd look too much like like you say one of them looks very much like you dressed up to, yeah. <laughs> to go um but i remember someone else another uh uh author that i know um had a book released um towards the end of last year and it was the summer of last year actually and it was again two two real people on, on the front cover it's like a stock photo or whatever but one of them is uh the, ended up being one of alana's warders in, in the wheel of time so <laughs> oh, that's, that's him, really. it's like so I, that's all i can see when i look at it is because i know who yeah is, you know so. well that is the problem when you use um i mean stock footage and i mean i remember uh when the david eddings books came out this is like but those covers they had been used in in Swedish role playing games like years before. Right, so okay. all I was thinking is like the Swedish versions of Dungeons and Dragons. It's like why are they using Dungeons and Dragons covers? Yeah. Oh well, it's questy, you know. Yeah, I know. I guess. So, yeah, I guess so. so. We, these walls will fall. So that that's out as well. So tell us a little bit about about that because that's that's the start of a, a series as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually yeah, it's the start of a series. I, I wrote it to, to begin with as like um. Um, as a submission for a, a short, uh, like a magazine, uh, and that never came to fruition either. I don't know what happens. Like I submit something and then they just kind of fold. Yeah. After that, they're just like, we don't know what to do with this. We just gotta fold. <laughs> You've got a curse on it on publishers when you send them something. Out. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it it's also it also takes place in the future, but more of an ambiguous future, and it's also a noir story, a dystopian noir where. Uh, and also very close to what could have been a possible reality. Um, so it takes place in, it's never actually said where it takes place, but it takes place in the in a country where um, an oppressive government has taken control uh, and segregated the world. So the people that are, as they would call them, deviants, people who are homosexual or transsexual, transgender, whatever, uh, have been excommunicated to borough, various boroughs in in the city uh, and it was kind of and it, it's never really explicitly described in this book but it is or in this story but it is in the second one more explored um is that the previous government was very was making a lot of laws that would have um you know given uh, people more rights like freedoms of like you know identify as whatever that you want to identify as and stuff it was more liberal Right. And that becomes so. There's a backlash in that, and that becomes the oppressive government. <clears throat> and they've taken away the internet and and cell phone usage and any any kind of like way of communication or spreading. So it's kind of fallen back into like a 1950s vibe. So people kind of like dress in in you know trilbies and and smoke and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a 50s vibe. The time is circular. And what happens is that the main character, who is a detective, police detective named Brian Bones. And his very um, weird colleague Jasper Collins uh, try to solve the murder of a famous TV clown called Krusty. Mm, almost. No. <laughs> he. I think he looks more like uh, what is it called? Patches Pity Party. That clown was kind of my oh, vision. Yeah. If you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, again, there's more to that story than just the murder of the clown. That's actually just kind of like a, there's something sinister. And clown in that world is a um, 
is a lifestyle that you can choose. You can identify as a clown. Oh, I definitely identify as a clown. <laughs> yeah. So there's a there's a they go into this borough called Pierrot, um, where they send all like clowns. Right. Okay. So they they get to 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 live. So so yeah. So that's that, and hopefully there'll be more in the in the series coming. I'm working on there is a there is a second one that also from Black Ink Fiction from their Faceless Worlds called Wake the World. Which is a basically a sequel story. Okay. So they're all well, they they uh, the the multiverse of Holtman is expanding without yes without so stopping. So uh, C M H U E U I guess yeah. <laughs> expanding. <laughs> so um, yeah, these walls shall fall out now. All the children shall lead from Black Ink Fiction is coming January thirty first. You can get it on paperback right now. Um, so thank you for everyone who's, who's stayed with us till the end. If you haven't subscribed with us before, please do. Um, there's more interviews with other authors. There is readings. There is also the Wheel of Time show, Easing the Reader, on the channel, which you may, if you've ever seen them, you would have recognised me and my guest from today because he is the uh, co- Co-host. Host. Co host talker. <laughs> Yeah, I can't think of the word there for a second of easing the reader. So, uh, yeah, please do check that out. And if you haven't been with us before, please give us a subscribe. All of Chris's uh, links will be in the show notes below as well. So do check those out. Chris, thanks very much for coming on talking to me about all the children shall lead and best of luck with it. And it's released. Thanks. Nice and to be here. No worries. And until <laughs> next time, thanks very much. Mm.